Okay, so in this video we're going to do a, several different things today, and one of the things is just looking at um, a measurement such as income and asking ourselves the question whether or not what the GSS is saying, to what extent can we believe that this is a valid, uh, what kind of inferences can we make out of this data set? You know, this is a representative data set, but there's random error uh, as there is with any uh, data set, and we can only make statements by taking into account how that random error affects us. So let's look at the frequency, for instance, for income. So I'm just going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, go to Frequency, and um, I'm just going to type in real income, and there it goes. Move it over. Um, let me see what I have here. I'm going to ask for my central tendencies, the mean, medium, mode. Uh, since I'm here, I'm just going to also ask for the dispersion, uh, standard deviation, minimum, maximum. Click on continue. And uh, if I just run this right now, it's going to give me a, a quite a very long frequency table because it's real income in terms of dollars. And so there might be you know several hundred different values here. And I don't really actually need to see the, the, the actual values. I just want to know the descriptive, so I'm going to press OK. Okay, so here's my output, and uh, doesn't have the frequency table, but it does give me just the basic descriptives. You know, out of uh, 26,000 people, uh, I'm sorry, 2,600 people, um, we have a mean of $26,000, uh, a medium of 17,000, and a standard deviation of around um, 28,000. Um, so, if we know that the mean is is 26,000, and this is the average for the GSS. Um, what if we want to know, um, can we make an inference that the average income in the United States is around 26000 um, And to do that, we would want to take into account the random error that I talked about earlier. So we're going to run a t-test uh, to figure that out. And to do that, we go to, descript to analyze, and we go to compare means. Uh, and we're going to do a one-sample t-test. In actuality, we don't really use one sample t-test that often, but just to show you how to use t-test, we're going to go ahead and ask this kind of uh, contrived question of whether or not um, the average income in the U.S. is 26000 So again, I'm going to look for my real income. Um, move, move it over. And like I said, let's test the value. Um, is Can we make an inference? That based on what we saw, that the real income in the real population, again, not in the sample, but in the real population, is 26,000. And um, I'm just going to put the test value as 26,000, so that's what the t-test is going to test. And I just click OK. OK, so this is a, a t-test, and it gives us two tables. Uh, one of them gives us the mean that it's the you know the sample mean and it gives us the number of respondents and then the second table tests this question of whether or not the real mean the mean in the population is 26,000 to what extent can we make an inference that the real mean is 26,000 when the sample mean is around 26 uh, 353 and to do that it gives us a t statistics uh, standardizing the distribution and asking a question how likely is it that 26,000, I'm sorry, how likely is it that um, this could be our real mean, given that this is what our sample mean says? And it gives us a T of 0.637, and it says uh, that in terms of significance, it's 0.524. Um, basically saying that there's actually a high likelihood that if this is the real value, that we could have sampled 26,353. So because it's above uh, 0.01 and 0.005, you know, it's 0.524, it's obviously high above. This is a, a, a good likelihood uh, that these values could actually be occurring. Um, so again, just to be redundant, if the real population is $26,000 in the United States, what's the probability that when we sampled the United States that we came to a sample mean of 26,353? Uh, the probability, uh, looking at the distribution, is 0.524, uh, which is a high enough probability for us. Um, so that's a sem one sample t-test. 
Um, let's say that we're actually curious about looking at different groups, um, you know, and we want to ask a question of, well, how do men and women, for instance, uh, compare um, in terms of income? And last time we showed you how to select cases um, by doing something uh, such as this, looking at you know whether or not how females and males are coded, and then selecting out females and selecting out males. Um, there's actually a simpler way to do that. Um, you know, you could do the other way, but this is a, a much more simpler way to do it. Is just to do this split file command. Uh, we go to split file. And uh, as you see, the default setting is that we're going to analyze all cases and, and, and look at one thing. So for our previous example, when we looked at income, we looked at all groups. But let's say we want to look at by sex. We type in sex. And we can do compare groups. And we do it, compare groups by sex. So now, uh, if I click on OK, it's going to split um, my file, my data file, into two separate groups. So I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to run the same frequency as I did, or same analysis I did this last time. OK, and here is my output. And this is the same data, but now it's being split up in two different ways. Um, it's being split by males and females. And in the previous example, we saw that the income for the entire group was around 26,000. But in terms of splitting it by male and female, we see that they have different means. Men's income, the mean is around 30,000, almost 31,000. And the mean income for women is 21,000. Um, another way we could do this is to split um, the file a little bit differently. Uh, instead of by comparing groups in one box, we can actually organize the outputs by sex um, so that it, it actually splits up the file in a different way. So I'm going to go Analyze, Frequency. Now remember, sometimes students get this confused. We're splitting by sex, but we're still looking at income. We could look at something else, but let's just stick with the income case. Press OK. And you see now it's split up um, in two different tables as opposed to one. Here is the males, and here is the females. And this is actually a, a pretty simple way of splitting groups, especially if there's more than two categories. Let's say we're looking at race. Um, SPSS, let's say we're looking at the different races that are present in the GSS and how it breaks down in terms of income. We can just put the, the kind of splitting variable as race, and it would give us three or four, how many you know categories there are for race for each, um, and give their means for each. Um, so again, we have 30,000 for men, and then we have 21,000 for women. Now, a question that you, know, you might have is, OK, men and women clearly in our sample make different amounts of money. Um, but can we make an inference that this is actually true in the US? You know, this is a you know, randomly selected sample, uh, so we can make an inference. But like with any sample, we have error. We have random error. And are, is this difference between 30,000 and 21,000 large enough to account for that error? Two mean t-test. And we just go to analyze. Compare means, which, you know, we're going to compare the means of men and women. We're going to do an independent sample t-test. And we're not going to talk about paired sample t-tests. That's a little bit more complicated. Um, but for right now, they're independent. Um, they're two different uh, groups uh, on the same measure. So let's look at, uh, actually, before I do this, I need to turn off my split file. I forgot to do that. So before I move on, let me go ahead and go to my data um, split file. Because when you split the file, it's on it until you turn it off. So I'm going to go back to the default setting, press OK. And now we're going to go to Analyze, 
compare means and do an independent sample t-test. Now my test variable is income. So let me go ahead and find my income. I put that. And now my groups is going to be sex. OK, so I have my test variable income. My grouping is by sex. Now I need to define my groups. Uh, that means is they want to know, you know, if there's more than, let's say there were three sexes for somehow. Um, of course, there's only two, but this uh, sample t-test can only compare two groups. It can't compare, let's say, races that has multiple groups. So in that situation, it would, would ask, okay, which races do you want to compare? But for sex, there's only two groups. So we just put one and two, and uh, that's pretty simple. Um, and then I just click OK. OK, so it gave, a, gave us a two output tables for the t-test. One is the group statistics, and it tells us you know, our two groups here that we're looking at. It tells us what, how many were in each group, 1,300 for each. And it gives us the two different sample means that we have for these groups. For men, it's around 31,000. And for women, it's around 21, 22,000. So, and then we look at the sample t-test um, table itself. And the first thing you got to do is ignore um, this first Levine's test for equality. Um, it's a test that we won't really cover in this class, so we can go ahead and ignore it. And we can just look at the t-test. And for this t-test, we're testing the null hypothesis that the population means for men and women equal the same. And um, to what extent is that true, um, given, given the fact that we got two separate sample means? You know, what's the probability that um, men and women earn the same, but in our sample we got two different means, uh, one for 22,000 and the one for 31,000? And um, it gives us a significance of 0 .000 saying that, yes, this is possible, but it's very, very unlikely to happen. Um, at, at a below 0.01 and below a 0.005%. So this is such a low uh, uh, percentage of likelihood that we can reject the null hypothesis to say that, in fact, men and women earn different amounts of money in the real population. So our sample difference is large enough above and beyond our random error in our sample to make that inference. Okay, let's say we were interested in uh, looking at different groups. Um, you know, this is between men and women. Let's look at the income difference for races, for instance. And let's look at, I'm just going to change um, my split file. And uh, so far we've been looking at something with two groups. Let's look at, let's look at something like race, which has more. Um, so let's do compare mean by race. Click OK. Then I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive, Frequency. We've got the income there. And we see that the GSS is only has only three categories for race. We have white, black, and other. Um, and we see that even though it's just a very simplistic way of breaking down race, they do have very different incomes. We have white at around 28,000, uh, blacks at 19,000, you know, almost 20,000, and other at 19,000. And now a question that we might have is to what extent are these differences in sample mean um, uh, above and beyond the difference that we would account for variance? I mean, for uh, random error. And we can't just do a sample t-test. Um, and we actually have to do a different type of test that we'll cover in the next video that shows us how to tell if these differences across groups, more than two groups, are, are large enough. These differences are large enough to make the inference that, yes, these groups make different amounts of money. And that's called analysis of variance, or ANOVA. And we'll cover that in the next couple videos.